Unit 1 Recording 14.2 Various Ways of Analyzing Agribusiness DPM has a supplier or several suppliers of milk, which unlike DPM, have a simple organizational structure, as their only operation is production. The farm owner is the manager, who is in charge of handling negotiations with the bank to ensure that the business gets a loan in case it needs more finance. The farm owner deals with customers and monitors the cattle health and good milk quality, calls in a veterinary service if need be. The farm employs a skilled herdsman and three unskilled farm labourers. The owner's wife administers the farm on a part-time basis. So, an agribusiness can be defined as a complex or simple business. There is another framework of agribusiness as it means a business sector, and an agribusiness can be defined according to the economic sector. The dairy family farm belongs to the primary economic sector, as its purpose is to produce raw materials. The secondary sector includes manufacturing and processing businesses such as DPM. There is also a tertiary sector, which consists of industries which provide a service, such as transport and finance, and quaternary sector, which provides information services, such as computing, ICT, information and communication technologies, and consultancy. Another type of classification of an agribusiness is its size. There are different frameworks for defining each type. For example, according to the US Department of Agriculture, small family farms average 231 acres, large family farms average 1,421 acres, and the acreage of a very large farm is 2,086 on average. Under the European Union framework, a business with fewer than 10 employees is defined as a micro-business. With 10 to 50 employees, it is a small business. And a business with 50 to 250 is called a medium-sized business. In food and agriculture in particular, a business can be analysed and classified according to philosophy. Ethical principles it bases its activities on. For over a decade, there has been a growing demand for organic products and more and more agribusinesses have made their choice to use organic raw materials and ethical production processes to meet the demand. Those agribusinesses base their activities on the principle of fair trade to be described as an ethical business which produces organic products. When the word ethical is used to describe a farm, for example, it means that the farmer avoids using artificial fertilizers and pesticides, and it has a small carbon footprint. When the word fair trade is used to describe a product, it implies that the producer has a commitment to ensure that the workers are treated fairly, and so are the domestic animals. It means that every part of the supply chain meets the fair trade requirements. So, ethical businesses make their decisions on this philosophy, unlike conventional, mainstream companies, which guiding principle is commercial interest and profit. Yet, more and more conventional businesses have become aware of the importance of ethics in the marketplace and tend to diversify into more ethical products. As today, more and more people make their choice based on cost and quality, on one hand, and ethical and moral principles on the other. Not only free-range chicken or green products, for example, dominate the consumer choice, but also what factory methods are used to manufacture the product or strict ethical rules that are used to manufacture meat products. Cosmetics are a very important part of the secondary agribusiness sector. More and more consumers opt for the products of the companies which specialise in organic beauty products, so retailers have considerably increased the number of organic products on supermarket shelves. In the same way, the beauty without cruelty movement has persuaded customers to refuse to buy cosmetics that use animals for testing. All in all, Ethical choices and products have been gradually replacing conventional choices worldwide.